Coming up on this week's Faz TV, we're in Peeblesshire at Netherard Home Farm to take a look at how integrating woodland on farm can be a valuable asset in supporting livestock production, improving biodiversity and providing a long-term timber crop. Don't be scared of trees, but you have to research what you want, figure out what you're looking for, what your goal is, and it's got to fit well with you. Andrew Adamson is a fourth generation farmer at Netherard Home Farm near West Linton, where his family have farmed since 1940. Woodland has always been a key feature at Netherard, providing shelter and shade for livestock throughout the year. Through careful woodland management, trees also provide the farm with an alternative income stream, enhancing biodiversity and natural capital. Timber on the farm, some of it has always been here as woodland for recreational purposes for the estate and we've expanded upon that. Our main predominant sheep breeds, we use Scotch mules put to Texel rams to produce Texel females which all go to Suffolk thereafter for the entirety of the life. I, we're producing 1,350 plus fat lambs, well, 1,350 lambs and about 1,200 fat lambs a year and all our cattle are sold fat either through H&H &H at St Boswell's in the live ring for the better end, Scott Beef and a Macduff at Wishaw. The topography of the farm we range from 720 feet in the drive at the steadings we're about 750 feet above sea level ranging to, uh, rising to 1150 on the very top of the hill which we can plough above a thousand feet and crop at a thousand feet around here as well quite happily. Benefits with trees for livestock we'll try and start from winter right through winter time we're getting protection from the wind, we'll also get a bit of protection from the cold, especially when we're out wintering our ewes and strip grazing ewes on forage crops up to lambing time. Sometimes in adverse, real adverse weather, we will open up a woodland to allow them in if it is going to be bad, but we try not to, uh, just because they can get up to a bit of nonsense in the wood or do something silly or get cowed. But that's our own experience that tells us that but the benefit of the trees does protect them from the cold and protects them from adverse weather in the winter. Springtime, huge benefit. We get earlier turnout of the lambs after lambing time. We have certain fields we can turn out into very quickly, let them get toughened up for a day or two, then they can move to the higher pastures, which have still got tree protection from shelter belts, but they're just slightly larger fields. Summertime, they use the wood and they use the species trees especially for shade. They'll follow them around in the shade all day. And the same in the autumn, you're getting a bit of protection from wind and rain in the autumn as well. Species of trees on farm vary from native woodlands right the way through to productive conifers, as we still do plant a lot of sitka for commercial woodland, but we'll also plant a lot of Douglas as well for saw log as well. Hardwoods, we're losing certain species, same in the softwoods, we're losing larch, we're losing ash because of problems. We also have been diagnosed with a problem with a uh, spruce bark beetle by the forestry, so they're going to be coming in the spring to do biological control. They're going to release something, another a little parasite that will take out the spruce bark beetle and hopefully it seems to be quite effective where they've done it. We do have a lot of pine on farm as well. Some very mature pines that I'm not in any rush to take out. I just like the wood, so I don't want to lose it. And the maintenance program of the trees varies between segments. If it's a new woodland creation, we're quite thorough to keep, make sure it gets up and running in the first two or three years. Maybe a bit of weed control is required in certain sites, but it's all mounded to give them a clean start. We try to replant within 12 months of deforestation as such a eh, because we do know we'll have a large eh, weed population in the ground so even with the mounding if we can get trees in they'll get away from the weeds and get up a lot quicker but it does open you up to, you have to monitor for a little bit of disease or a little bit of a beetle and things a weevil you have to watch for 
and when you get a bit older then there'll be a first thin and a second thin on the productive timber for then go as saw log. Go for a timber crop, it really depends on the production of the site. Sometimes you have to break eggs to make omelettes, sometimes you have to go a bit quicker. We started a, quite a few years ago removing the non-productive zones, probably about 2011. We took out an awful lot of wind blow and damaged small, small segments, which we were told at the time would have a financial cost of about 8,000 to us which we actually turned around to be an £8,000 net profit from doing it in-house by paying a contractor to do it and take it from day one to the end and marketed the wood herself. So there is a bit of money there, but it was reinvested back into woodland and to improve access for the next extractions. A we have got damage with Storm Orwin, which we're going to have to put a new landing in, a new, not a new road access, just a new landing for vehicles to turn on to access back to public road. That will be done hopefully this in 2023, maybe into 2024, and restocked fairly quick afterwards. We'll probably be looking to replant with Sitka spruce, Scotch pine and hardwoods as we see fit. Grant funding that we've received, we've done a couple of new woodland creations in history sort of thing. A, one was a native woodland natural regeneration, one was a native woodland creation. The native woodland creation was on an awkward part of the farm. It was steep. It was it is steep. It has got a bit of bracken on it. You couldn't mechanically control bracken, so it was heli sprayed. Then we deer fenced it and planted it. But since then we've stopped using deer fencing because we don't think they need to be deer fenced because there's better quality grassland or forage crops or wheat crops growing and they would rather eat that than a tree. Trees play an important role within the farming system at Netherard and Andrew encourages fellow farmers and crofters to consider creating new woodland on their land. From his experience, there are some key factors to consider before starting. Know your farm, know your limiting points. Consider what parts of the farm you're willing to maybe lose to woodland for the greater good of livestock or cropping. Know where your drains are, because you'll just end up in a whole host of trouble if you don't figure out where your drains are before you plant a wood because if your main drains go through it, you're going to be forever sorting it out. Because speaking from experience, we've got 200-year-old beech trees on top of some main drains on the farm, and every now and again you have to try and work on them. Future, we'd like to hopefully still be doing what we're doing. Maybe have to change one thing, one or two things, but we feel we've got a decent amount of biodiversity within farm, within the woodlands, within different types of woodland. With new agricultural bill, I would hope there might be a more simplistic way to encourage or entice people to add trees to farm, either through hedgerows or species trees, which the big thing is, we'd like to replace some of the species trees in the farm, and that might be a way that we could do it because it doesn't fit within the forestry bills at present or the agri-environmental, which is very difficult to get into. Something a bit more simplistic or simpler would be maybe encourage more trees to go on ground rather than putting folk off. Lynn White, Forestry and Farming Development Officer at Scottish Forestry, is an advocate of integrating trees on farm. Lynn has some practical advice for farmers, crofters and land managers across Scotland. Planting trees on a farm or a croft um, has to meet the farming business objectives really, that's the main thing we're looking at, is what will it do for your business. So there's a variety of things that it might do for your business, it might be provide shelter and shade, so in the long run you're getting better productivity, your daily live weight gain and obviously that's what we're all looking for is better productivity and things like that. So again, housing costs and things like that can be reduced because you can leave stock out longer, you're reducing feed costs and that kind of thing as well. And obviously over the summer there, we had, we've seen it was really warm. 
So now we're looking at shade has been very important. Um, even in mild heat stress, uh, cattle are seen to drop in fertility, milk yield, and obviously if they're, they're, they're stressed at all, it's, it's not good for productivity. So in the, in the future, trees can provide not just shelter, but shade as well. Um, another thing we could be looking at is obviously when it comes to lambing and calving time, having that better bit of shelter for your, your cattle and your sheep is better for lamb survival and calf survival. And it's been noted as well, it improves the bond between mother and, and offspring. Also, when we're looking at um, landscapes and that kind of thing, using that less productive land might be better for the landscape and also adds to our biodiversity. Interestingly enough, we've got 172 per species in our, uh, our woodlands and forests in Scotland. Really importantly, that 75% of the UK's red squirrel population is in our forests and woodlands. Again, very topically, we could talk about carbon. It's one of these things that's high in the agenda with everybody. So under if you're doing new woodland creation, you could be looking at the Woodland Carbon Code, planting trees for obviously uh, sequestering carbon, that kind of thing is, is very important. People doing carbon audits and things like that now as well. And then obviously we're looking at other assets on the farm. We're looking at soil protection, having trees there to protect your soil. 2.9 million tonnes of our topsoil in the UK is lost every year into rivers and streams and onto roads and things like that. So we want to avoid that sedimentation going into rivers and that contamination. Also, we want to avoid um, our very expensive fertiliser and manures ending up in rivers and causing things like algal blooms and that kind of thing. So better having trees on your farm, reducing that kind of peak flow and a bit of flood management there as well. Under the, the current forestry grant scheme, you could look at new fencing. So that's redefining boundaries uh, or keeping new boundaries in shape, help with biosecurity and everything like that. So again, fencing is part of the equation that you might might be helpful for. Um, and by no means last is uh, timber. Uh, as a crop, if you put your, your woodland in the right place and you've got access and that kind of thing. Beneficially, if you're looking at a good commercial crop, you might be taking some out in maybe 18 to 20 years. So really important about kind of that timber crop rather than maybe being 40 years away to think about it as just as any other livestock or anything like that, if you actually manage it really well, you get end up with a really good quality product quicker than you might expect. There's a wide range of forestry grants. Um, again, depends on what your objective is, what you want at the end of the day. Um, there's anything from, if you wanted to do it for, you've got conifers, you've got diverse conifers, so that's less sick of spruce and that kind of thing. You've got broad leaves, you've got native broad leaves. You could look at a multitude of different options. There are a lot of options out there just to meet your objectives. But again, back to the business objective, what, what are you actually looking for? Is it a timber crop? Is it for habitat and biodiversity? Is it for protecting a lambing field or something like that? What are you actually after to meet that business objective at the end of the day? Under the grant scheme, you could be looking at, um, obviously, there's your initial payment that pays for your design and your trees and your planting and everything like that. And then we would go on to a maintenance scheme. So that's a five-year maintenance scheme just to give your trees a really good start. Um, look after them kind of weeding and keeping the tree density up and everything like that. Again, all the schemes have different densities that you have to keep the trees actually at. Again, commercial crops have a, a higher density and things like that. You're less commercial, slightly less uh, density trees, but very important to keep that tree density up because that's what you're getting paid for and everything like that. Um, again, you'll get your capital payments that will pay for your stock fencing, your deer fencing, rabbit netting. To protect the trees, obviously, you're looking at Volgards and tree protection and obviously in some areas before you're putting woodlands in if you're going to be using that ground you'll get gorse removal and bracken removal as well and probably importantly to say as well that the scheme's actually open all year round it's not like your egg scheme or anything like that you can actually just apply any time of the year and obviously if your land's been eligible for BPS and you put it under FGS it still becomes it it still is eligible for BPS. There's a wide range of help out there uh, obviously the integrated tree network that we run, we've got a website, we have six brilliant hosts uh, across Scotland who've all shared their key messages and we've done videos and everything like that. So from a practical farmer point of view, just to get a toe in the water, the website's quite good. You could look at the Scottish Forestry website. There's obviously 
once you've got a kind of an early proposal and that kind of thing, you might want to speak to your local woodland officer. We have offices all over Scotland, so it's good to have a chat with them and just to see what you're proposing at an early stage and say, well, that's a great idea, or maybe we want to look at this, or, oh, that, that's quite good, you'll have target area, you'll get a wee bit more money per hectare and things like that. Also, under the Farm Advisory Service, there's a specialist uh, funding uh, for woodland creation, woodland management and conservation, so you can apply for that, and that's up to £1,000. So you can apply for that. It takes literally two or three minutes to apply for it, and then that means that you can get a forestry consultant out on the ground to come and look and say, I've got this field here or this area here that I might consider for planting trees on, um, and just gives you an idea of the finances and what's actually involved. Again, depending on where you are, um, if you're in the borders, you've got the Borders Forest Trust, the Tweed Forum, if you're in the crofting areas, we support the Croft Woodland Project, which is great to get somebody out on the ground and just look at what's on your croft, what might be achievable, could they support it through the Woodland Trust or it would be a forestry grant scheme and that kind of thing. So there's quite a, a wide range as well, there's uh, support through the, the national parks and things like that as well, just to, to get started, depending on what stage of the process you're actually at. Advice, I would say, is like anything that we say, right tree, right place, right reason. It has to work for your business to going forward for you to, to look at it seriously. What is it actually going to do for your business in the long term kind of thing? As I say, we've talked about timber, we've talked about habitat and biodiversity, shelter and shade in the future and everything like that. It has to work for your business and you have to just see it like another crop. It's just long term. Like any other crop, you would look at your soil type, you would look at the species or variety you're going to grow. And is it going to thrive? Is it going to give you something at the end of the day? So just consider these things, but in the long term, there is multiple benefits. You might want a timber crop, but you'll end up with shelter and shade. You might end up with a bit of biodiversity. So it's not just one thing you'll end up with, it's probably a multitude of things. So. If you would like to find out more and explore how woodland could fit within your farming business, visit the Integrating Trees Network webpage or contact Scottish Forestry at forestry.gov.scot. Happy New Year to all um, and we hope you've had a restful festive season and here we are tramping our way through January. Next on a lot of people's minds will be lambing time and preparations will be well underway for getting going. In the next few weeks a lot of views will be housed in preparation for lambing and it's a really good time just to take stock of how's lambing going to go, can you do any improvements to make it go as smoothly as possible. So the first thing to think about is think about your year condition, are they on target condition and what nutrition are they getting once they're housed. Most of the reasons that we get lambs in through lambing season um, that have died, if we are doing postmortems on them to see why they've died, a lot of the causes of death can be prevented through administration of really good quality colostrum at birth. So colostrum is key for a successful lambing time. And key for good colostrum is good new, new body score and nutrition. You can speak to your vet about um, blood sampling some ewes to see if the diet they're on has enough protein and energy in it because this is what gives you good colostrum. You also want to make sure that ewes have enough space to access this diet, so enough feed space is really, really important. In the last few weeks we've had um, reports of eye disease in sheep coming in, um, so we've been receiving swabs from sheep with eye disease. This can be caused by many things, so some mycoplasma, some bacteria, um, and not, not all will be responsive to antibiotics, but some will be. So it's really important to investigate, see what's causing it. So you can speak to your vet to take some swabs, get them into us. This is another really important reason for having lots of feed space, because eye disease is often spread when they're all eating at a ring feeder or a trough. So if you um, increase the speed, uh, feed space, then um, things like eye disease shouldn't spread so readily throughout your sheep. Also in January, we often see our first cases of ovine abortion. So we get aborted lambs coming in through the labs. We've already had some um, from early lammers um, through sort of November, December, um, but sort of from January onwards is when we, we hit the peak of it. Um, if you're getting abortions in your sheep, it's really important that you do investigate. The only way to um, conclusively diagnose the cause of abortion is to examine the fetus and the placenta. So it's really important that you gather that up and get it to your vet who can send it on to us um, and we can investigate to see what the cause of abortion is. Now it might be that the cause of abortion um, is something that needs vaccinated against, so um, 
EAE or toxoplasmosis. Um, there's really effective vaccines available against these things, um, but that would be something to put into your health plan for next year. But if you don't investigate this year, you don't know that it's in your flock, so you're not going to know to do anything about it before next year. There are other causes of abortion that are sporadic, so we can put your mind at rest that you know it's not going to be a big problem. Um, and there are other causes that um, could be due to you illness, so you nutrition, that sort of thing. If it's not quite right, then you can get lamb losses that way. So there are lots of different reasons for um, use to abort. And like I say, it's really important that you investigate it at the time rather than thinking back, um, you know, I wonder what caused those abortions. So um, get that, that material, the fetus and the placenta bagged up, get it to your vet, isolate that you and just be proactive and do something about it. So if you look at your new, new nutrition, um, feed space and um, be proactive about any health issues in your newly house use should hopefully set you up for a really successful lambing season.